For a lot of us, one of the big things that holds us back from doing what we want to do with model railroading is money. Today, I'm going to talk about some budgeting tips and tricks and things that I do to handle money with model railroading. Welcome everybody to another episode of Coffee and Train. Before I begin, I am drinking a donut shop blend coffee and as always, I take it black with two sugars. Today I'm doing probably what some people probably consider maybe a slightly touchy subject and that is money and the cost of model railroading. Like any other hobby, model railroading isn't the cheapest thing in the world. And the bottom line is we don't do model railroading because it's cheap. We do it in spite of the fact that it's not cheap. <laughs> I want to talk about a few things that I do and a few tips and tricks that I have for budgeting for model railroading and how to plan out your budget for model railroading because having a budget for model railroading can make things a lot clearer and a lot easier when you're making purchasing decisions for your model railroad. So the first thing I'm going to go through is three tips that I use for budgeting for model railroading. The first tip is to get what you need first. Now before you need the scenery, you need the base in place. And before you need the base, you need to buy stuff to make the base. So let's talk about that. You go ahead and buy your base or you get or you procure what your layout is going to sit on first. So whether it's a folding table or whether you're building a full-on room size model railroad, you've got to build that base first. So your budget when you're starting out for that should go towards building your base. Yes, it's fun to buy the cars and everything and there's no real problem with that. But if you're really looking to stick to a budget, build your base first. The next thing you really want to do is you want to focus on your track. Now I say this with a small caveat because you do need at least probably one locomotive and a few cars so that you can test track out properly as you install it. But you want to go for your track installation next. So put your money towards track after you've got the base. Now after you have those two things, that's when you really start buying trains. And I'll go more in depth about how I purchase trains and how I decide what I want um, in a minute. Um, but go ahead and trains is number three on that list. And then number four, I go for buildings. Buildings are something that don't necessarily come before scenery because the scenery is built up around them. Plus a lot of your buildings are based on what industries you want. So you want to have those buildings in. And number five, last but not least, is going to be your scenery. Once you have everything else in place, you have your track and everything in place, go ahead and purchase your scenery item. So that is my order for purchasing. So that's my first tip is have an order for purchasing. My second tip goes back to track. More track equals more money. And it's not necessarily prototypical. I see a lot of spaghetti track plans, which don't get me wrong. If you want to do that, that is perfectly fine. If that's what makes you happy, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to save a little money and you want to work a little bit more prototypical, you can use less track. So the less track, the more money that you will save and you can put towards trains, buildings, and scenery. And my third tip is to make a plan. Have your layout planned out. I have literally burned through my first three layouts because I just kind of threw track together and said, that looks nice. And that's several hundred, if not over a thousand dollars that I could have put towards a nicer plan. Now, I am personally happy that I did those things because I learned a lot. But if you want to save a little money, make a plan. It helps you spend less money. Okay, so let's talk about how I budget. I break my budget down into two main sections. And the first is what I can build. Now this in terms of DIY electronics, DIY scenery, I have an idea of what I can build. And it pretty much goes everything that doesn't run on rails. I don't like to scratch build too much stuff that runs on rails. I know there are a lot of people that are perfectly fine with that. It's just, I want my railroad to run as smooth as possible. And for that reason, I want to buy from a manufacturer for stuff that runs on rails. And that's my other half of my budgeting. So let's get into more of the what I buy instead of what I build because you guys have seen a lot of what I build. You can just check out a lot of videos on my channel to see what I do. But what I buy is locomotives and rolling stock. Those are the real things that I buy. I'm a 3D printer of buildings and I love to make my own scenery. I do buy the base materials, but um, I tend to make my own scenery as much as possible. So 
And for locomotives, if you're looking to just start off and you want to have more than one locomotives, here's what I recommend. I recommend getting one mainline locomotive. Um, if you're talking about steam, you're talking about something like a Hudson or a Mikado or something like that. Um, if you're talking about diesels, you're talking about something like SD40, 60, 70, something like that. If you're looking at a later era, um, if you're looking at an earlier era, you're talking about like F7 units. Um, and then I also like to have one switcher. So if you're talking about steam, you're talking about 060s and those little 080s. Um, if you're talking about diesel, you're talking about like Alco RS3s or S4s or SW7s, smaller locomotives like that. This gives you a little bit of freedom in your operations because you can have that mainline train running cars in for you to play with your switcher and move cars about with. So that's if I'm starting off to purchase, I go for one mainline locomotive and one switcher. And I don't care if it's a yard switcher or if it's a road switcher, just a switcher of any kind. Now for rolling stock, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. The first thing I like to do is establish one of two desires. Am I buying rolling stock to fit the industries that I have on my layout or am I buying rolling stock for what I like? Now, if I'm buying it for the industries, it's pretty straightforward. You know, if I need box cars or hopper cars or flat cars, or gondolas for an industry, that's pretty straightforward. And then I can just sprinkle in a few random purchases here and there. If I'm buying because I like a certain type of car or I like a certain road name or things like that, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. But here is how I budget when I'm just buying stuff that I like. And I do actually have some preferences for cars that I like. For instance, I'm a big fan of a lot of box cars. I love the way that box cars look. That's probably my favorite piece of rolling stock because it can also be used for just about anything in terms of being on your layout. But let's say I'm wanting to get a bunch of box cars. Um, you need to make a plan and make a list. I always make a list of the things that I need to purchase. Now, whether this is just something that you've jotted down on a piece of paper or it's a full on spreadsheet that you've written up on your computer, making a list will save you money because you know exactly what you're saving up for and you'll know exactly how much you need to get when you can purchase it. So when you have that amount of money, you go buy the thing on your list and then you start working on the next thing on your list. So that is how I purchase things that I just simply want to buy. And I decide the way of things I want to buy based on what I want to collect at the time. And I make a decision. I decide I'm going to collect box cars or I decide that I'm going to build an intermodal train. I decide to do these things and then my budget is going to shift to doing that. So that is how I make my decisions for buying in terms of building and buying raw materials. I'll pretty much go for the lowest reasonable cost. I don't go too low because sometimes when you get too cheap, the materials aren't that great. But in terms of building, it's pretty straightforward. But that's how I buy stuff um, on a budget. And those are some of my tips and tricks for buying stuff and doing all sorts of stuff. Some great things you can do. You can buy a ton of stuff used. A lot of people buy stuff used. eBay is a great source. You just have to make sure you get from someone that you trust on eBay. Another great place once everything that's going on right now is over is model train shows because you can do haggling. One really easy way to haggle is to buy multiple things from a single vendor and then go a little bit under his price and have cash with you and say, for instance, I want he has four box cars that are $12 each. Um, I'll say, I have $40, can I have these four box cars? And most of the time they're gonna say yes to something like that. So that's a great simple way to haggle and save a little bit of money as well at a model train show. So I want to hear what you guys do. I wanna hear what you guys are doing for saving money, um, where you go to find used stuff, what are your priorities, all those kinds of things. And I just wanna thank you guys so much. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about a few other things, but I'm gonna to get to some of your answers from the previous week. I'm going to start doing that, something that I really, really wanted to do. So uh, speaking of all that, if you want to get your very own DIY and digital mug, I've got a Teespring store. You can check that out just below this video, and you can find that mug as well as a mug of the Be Kind and Play With Trains shirt. You can also find shirts, hoodies, all sorts of different things like that. So a special thank you to all of my patrons. They're the ones who really helped me get all of these ideas in place. If you'd like to become a patron, you can for as little as $1 a 
month. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for telling me which coffees you like, by the way. I really like that because it's giving me some new coffees to try. So until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.